I did a few lucky escapes. Uh, what was the key surviving on this wicket? And you did that well. Yeah, a bit of luck, like you say. Um, we we found it quite tricky. Um, ball was nipping around quite a bit. Obviously, the extra bounce we expected, but um, when it's nipping around as well, it it makes things quite tricky. So um, some sometimes you, you you get the rub of the green, and sometimes you don't. So I think at the end of the day, you just have to be grateful when you do get a bit of luck in the game. Congratulations on the win. Uh, can you talk us through about that Hardik Pandya over, you know, bowling bouncers with a great pace and the way you guys batted. Can you talk us through about that Hardik Pandya over and the pace and the bounce which was coming? Can you talk us through with that? Yeah, I mean, I think it was expected that their lengths would be sort of short of a good length. Um, and then the extra bounce, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, makes it quite tough. So um, we expected those lengths. I think the ball does get big on you, though, and um, it can make for as bad as looking quite silly at times. But, um, yeah, you almost just got to keep watching the ball as close as you can. Um, I think credit has to go to both bowling attacks today. I think that both bowling attacks bowled really well today. And, um, yeah, it was certainly difficult to score out there and, and they made um, life pretty tough for us as a South African batting group. Uh, hi, Eden. Well played tonight. Uh, was it like pre-decided that you guys are going to target uh, Ravichandran Ashwin because in the first innings as well, Keshav Maharaj didn't have the best economy rates? Yeah, I think naturally that's generally how the game would, would uh, sort of pan out when the seamers are that difficult to get away. Um, we expected them to take on Keshav. Um, I'm sure they expected us to take on Ashwin as well, be just because of the nature of the wicket, so because the seamers were so difficult to get away. So um, it almost got to a stage where we had to target someone because they had bowled so well initially in the first pretty much 10 overs, I would say, up until that drinks break. Um, so it, it got to a stage where we had to um, pick someone. It could be anyone on any night. Um, and sometimes you execute, sometimes you don't. But um, you, you pick those matchups according to who you're most comfortable against on the night. Uh, you'll get to different conditions and those those matchups will change completely. But um, yeah, it was a discussion that we had at the drinks break to pick one of the bowlers and um, commit to that. And if it comes off, then it, it might give us a chance. Uh, and how much did the, the pace attack enjoy, enjoy the Perth conditions tonight? And are you disappointed not to play any more games in, in Perth? Yeah, personally, I'm not too disappointed, but I think the bowlers are quite disappointed. Um, they've been, if I think back now, the last 12 to 18 months, they've been playing on wickets that are maybe slightly lower and slower. So I think they were extremely excited to bowl on this wicket tonight. Um, I think it's it's a lot of credit and it's not just our attack. The attack as well goes to them because I suppose you can get onto a wicket like this and almost get carried away in terms of what lengths you hit. Um, and actually end up giving freebies, whereas I think both bowling attacks didn't give those freebies tonight and they executed their lengths extremely well and um, made, life, made life very difficult for us batters. Eden, uh, Rohit won the toss and batted, and we heard uh, your captain also said that he would have batted first. So what was it that, you know, uh, that they wanted to bat first, but it ended up with the bowlers uh, calling the shots? Yeah, I'm not actually too sure. Um, Toss wise, I'm not too sure what would have been good to do first or second. Um, just from being out there and in, in, in for for a bit of the game, it didn't really feel like the pitch changed in any way. I thought it was bouncing and nipping around when we bowled and when they bowled. So um, it was probably a case of the toss not playing that that big of a role in on a wicket like this. Um, but yeah, I think like you say, I think we would have also probably batted first and. Um, yeah, it's about playing the conditions extremely well on the night, which was incredibly tricky to do for us batters. And if I can add, uh, how good were uh, Parnell and Ingidi? Yeah, really good. I think um, it's important for us to set the tone. I think Wayne's been doing it now for for a lot of games since he's almost joined us again. And um, he's got that experience and he's got that calmness of, of knowing how to set the tone with, with the ball and according to his own personal skill set. So... Um, we've enjoyed having him back, Lungi, in conditions like these. I think everyone would agree that um, he's becomes a, a massive weapon for us. And 
and um, we're grateful tonight that he, he he executed extremely well and managed to to make some early breakthroughs for us. This was such a crucial match tonight, and it puts you top of your group. Does it feel like you've got one foot in the semi-finals already? To be honest, I'm not even too sure what the log looks like. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a bit of like a a rush of a, these first few games with, with that first one that got washed out. So. Um, yeah, if we top of the, the log, that's, I suppose, a good thing. Um, but certainly not with thinking uh, with a, a foot in the door at the moment. We've still got a massive game against Pakistan. And um, then we've got Netherlands as well. And we've seen um, the teams that have joined the, the Super 12 stage are, can beat any team on their day. So there's still a lot of cricket to be played for us. Um, and it's pretty much about trying to get better game by game. So uh, we give ourselves the best chance to qualify if, if we do. I didn't, uh, four of the top six Indian batsmen got out playing the horizontal bat shot. It was a terrible ploy to dig in shot at them and were you surprised that they all went for those shots? Um, look, I think on a wicket like this, you, you're going to end up playing more horizontal bat shots than on other wickets just because of the nature of the bounce. So um, it's, it's a tough shot to play when there is extra bounce. Um, but ultimately, if a team keeps bashing at that length in T20 cricket, you as a batter also need to make a play. And um, that's probably the reason that both teams took those short balls on tonight. Because if you don't, you're unfortunately not going to score at a rate that's quick enough. So, um, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a ploy for us to hit hard lengths and try extract that extra bounce. Um, and I'm sure it was the exact same for, for the Indian pace attack. So, uh, yeah, that's just all down to conditions on the night. And we'll just take two questions from Zoom. Nathan, if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, thank you very much. Aidan, congrats with the win and good innings with the bat. I want to take you, take you a while back, uh, a while ago. You were out of form and took a long uh, a time away from the, from the game and the team. And now you're back and up and running with confidence. But for a guy like Timba, do you have any advice on how you can deal with this unfortunate run of low form? Or is it just a matter of support and hope he kicks on, which... Could be risky, especially leading up to the playoffs. Yeah, I think every player goes through these sort of form slumps, and um, with games that are so close to each other, it, it can seem a lot worse than what it is. But I think um, the whole team, management involved, have all been there for Temba, and um, ideas don't change about his ability. We all know his ability in our team and the role that he plays, not just with the bat, from, but also from a leadership point of view. So. Um, his leadership, in my opinion, has been excellent. Um, On-field decisions have been really good that he's making. So um, I've got no doubt he'll come right with the bat. Um, and yeah, if he does, it, it, and, and we can get off to some some good starts, I think it, it's going to help our batting unit a lot. But certainly not not doubting his ability at all. I think the whole team, and I can speak on behalf of the team as well, that we we all there for him, supporting him. It happens to everyone. We've all been it. Like you said, I, I've been through it more than once, unfortunately. And um, yeah, it's, it's it's always just one knock away. And that's that's sort of the message that Tim has been um, sort of given for, for the time being. And we'll just take one more question off Zoom. Zahir, if you'd like to ask your question. Uh, hi, Aiden. Uh, just uh, in terms of the batting unit all being informed, uh, obviously, by the captain, but just how much freedom does it give you guys to go out there and play and and just express yourself and really take on the bowling when when everybody's playing that well. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it definitely does help. Um, in a format like this, you you have to take risks and you have to play a, a positive brand of cricket. Um, and it, it certainly helps when your your batters are or seem to be in form. Um, tonight felt like I was far from being in form, but I mean, I suppose you get wickets like that and. Um, it's just about finding a way, I guess. So, um, yeah, it does definitely help. It does free us up a bit and hopefully the, all the batters can take confidence from that going forward. No, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you.